Hi there, my name's Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales and we're here today to bring you another video walkthrough on a new listing that we've just taken on. This is a Genoa NC14. It's a 2017 boat. Loads and loads of little features and benefits on this boat that I'm really excited to show you today. Um, we've just come back in from doing drone videos and as you can see from the footage here, this boat performs absolutely beautifully. The way she pushes through the waves is absolutely fantastic. Um, the boat has a really heavy feel to her. Um, the sort of feel I would say feels similar to a big flybridge boat where you're just pushing through the waves um, but still feels very sporty. She's powered by IPS 500 drives so the performance is really good but also the way that she handles you can really spin the boat around and feel like a nice sports boat. So we're here today at Gunwolf Keys. Um, if we have a quick look around here there's lots of people over there doing their Christmas shopping um, and of course dwarfed by the beautiful Spinnaker Tower. So quite a landmark here in Portsmouth. So this boat, as I mentioned, it's a 2017 boat and one of the great things about this boat is all of the little cubby holes and little areas of storage and lots of the features on board. So I'm really excited to show you the rest of the boat. So if we have a walk down the boat, I can show you the rest of her. One of the things to notice about this boat is its styling is actually in many ways, I think it's similar to sort of a very, very large, expensive Axapar. Um, the way that the side decks are up here, the quite slab sidedness gives loads and loads of accommodation on the boat, but she looks like a really, really powerful, mean machine. You've got nice windows down the side, so lots of light, as I'll show you in a minute, inside the cabins. And she's um, presented in this nice sort of dove grey colour. Um, she is due to come out of the water. She's coming out of the water to have a engine service, both the IPS drives and the engine service. And also she's going to have a hull polish as well. So let's step aboard. As I mentioned, this is a high-low platform, so this has the really nice ability to be able to have your tender um, stored on the back on chocks, and then just at a touch of a button, the platform will drop down into the water to allow your easy access for your tender on and off. Um, the name is illuminated on the back. That name is actually going to be taken away, so the name, the boat will be free to put the owner's name and their own stamp on it. But what you have right at the back of the boat, it reminds me of some of those really nice big Sunseeker Predators, where you have this lovely seating area at the back with access to either side. So it's all laid to teak here. Um, you've got enough space here to, I would say, sit four or four, five people around the back here. And we're in winter mode on the boat at the moment, so we've got a cover which is just protecting the teak table underneath. We'll go down into the engine bay a little bit later. In fact, I'll get Jonathan to take over a bit later and he can do his, his bit talking through the engines on this boat. Um, but access is through here and access all around the engines is really, really good. And you can get good access to the IPS drive system as well. At the back of this cockpit area, you've got this canopy which comes across and you've got skylights in the top of it. So I look there, I can see the top of the Spinnaker Tower. Um, it's nice in the winter, um, you feel nice and protected here. But of course, in the summer, you also have lots of nice protection from the sun here. You've got fusion speakers at the back and you've got courtesy lighting throughout. Down on the bottom of the boat you've got blue courtesy lighting and at the moment these top courtesy lights are in white mode but if I touch the outside button they actually turn into blue. So a touch on the button and now you have blue lighting. So at night the whole of the cockpit now uh, would be bathed in a beautiful blue light. I'll turn them off and go back to white again. So, let's cra carry on inside the boat. Very, very spacious entrance to this boat. You can see a really nice size U-shaped seating area here. The table is a fold-out table, so we've got it in the so small cocktail table design at the moment. But if I just lift that out now, you've got a full dining size there. So I think you could comfortably fit eight people around a nice meal around that table. Lots and lots of space. Close that up again. Put that back onto there. The distribution panel is hidden just behind here. And if you are sat down here with your family, um, wanting to watch a nice television uh, movie or something, then on the sideboard just over here, it's an ideal place to put a television. But one of the issues you have on boats is where you store televisions when they go onto sideboards. This boat doesn't have such a problem because there is a little button here. And if I push this button, up comes the television. It's a really nice feature. It just means that the sideboards can be kept really nice and clear and the television pops up out of the sideboard. So that's really nice there. 
Your galley on this boat, rather than taking up lots of space uh, down below, the galley area is here. So if I lift this up, then you have a two burner gas hob, you have a sink and you have a gas oven here. So everything that you need for simple cooking on board this boat. Lots and lots of storage areas. And if I open this one up, a very, very large, fully stocked fridge. All of the cupboards here, we've got space for all of your utensils. So although the kitchen is not a separate galley area, it's amazing how much they've managed to cram and how much storage space is in that area there. And just push that down there and it feels like a sideboard rather than a galley. It's a nice design and also means that when you're cooking, you're part of the family when you're up at this area as well. But it's not the only seating area. If we move up to here, you've got another seating area. So a secondary seating area where, again, you can fit another four people. So this boat's really set up nicely for family entertaining. You could have your children up here playing games, family meal going on down there. You've got lots of that light, lots of access. And while talking about light, you have a sunroof on this boat as well. So if we look up here, you've got a fully opening sunroof. If I move across to the helm area, you can see how to open the sunroof. Literally just press a button here, the sunroof opens up. The other thing that I really like about this is not only is it letting light in, letting lots of air in during the summer, but also from a driving point of view, you've got this really nice raised area at the helm position. So when you're driving, it's very, very easy just to stand here. Um, I'm not particularly tall, I'm about five foot ten, but I've got really good visibility straight out of the boat while still being able to hold onto the wheel here and throttles really nice at hand. So it gives you that sort of inside outside driving position. But certainly on a day like today, when we just come in from doing the, um, the drone footage um, out there it's pretty cold we've got the central heating system running now and it was really toasty and warm in here so if I just close this back up again and down it goes that's all nice and secure now. In terms of the helm position, we've got a bolster arrangement here. So I've got that folded in half there. And if I just lift that over, it creates a really good deep size seat. Something I was saying to Jonathan when we were out doing the sea trial a moment ago is actually this feels like a very nice long distance cruising boat. You could comfortably just jump in this, head across the Channel Islands, head down to the West Country, and it would just make traveling long distances very, very effortless. The way the boat pushes through the water, the social arrangements where you've got your family really nice and close with you. I, there's a lot to like about this boat and of course it is powered by the IPS drives. You might have noticed we're in quite a tight berth here at Gun Wharf. Um, Jonathan was on the helm earlier and just the ability to get this boat to go completely backwards, sideways, move it along is really fantastic all with this Volvo Penta joystick IPS control. Um, performance on this boat, I would expect the performance, she's a bit dirty on the bottom at the moment, so we had 24 knots. She's got the IPS 500, so I'd expect the performance on this to be around about 30 knots. Um, but what I say, she's got a dirty bottom at the moment, she's been in the water all, all summer, and it's amazing the difference that makes when there's some weed on the bottom of the boats. In terms of the ergonomics, everything's laid out really nicely. You've got your Volvo Penta displays here that we're reading at cruise around about 100, 110 litres an hour. You've got a Raymarine hybrid touch chart plotter. All of the engine instrumentation is right in front of you. Engine hours, about 250 engine hours. Fusion radio in front, a bow thruster as well, electronic trim tabs, um, Raymarine VHF, and of course, your the latest generation of Volvo Penta controls. So everything's really nice and handy. And from a point of view of getting easy access to the deck, you've also got this really nice door that I can just open that up communicate with the crew when it comes to mooring up or just get nice easy access or create a really nice breeze during the summer. It's the nice thing again about this boat because it's it's an inside outside style boat during the summer months if you open the window over there open this door open the roof up it will feel like an open sports boat but then very quickly at times a push of a button and she encloses up with no need to worry about covers cockpit space etc. So What's the accommodation like? Let's head on down below. So going down the stairs here, you have a sort of a hall area. Um, this is really nice, so you've got easy access to, you've got a twin cabin at the rear, you've got a ensuite facility, which is a main uh, heads here for the boat, and also ensuite for the master cabin. And then just behind me, you have a cloakroom. 
This is a really nasty feature. So it's a little cloakroom design. I really like this. Um, in here, they've got all their life jackets, but you could put your wet weather gear, absolutely anything you need, just storage in there for your hoover. And it's unusual to find a boat of this size with its own personal cloakroom. I quite like that. So let's start off with the master cabin. The master cabin, we step inside, it's got a really nice island bed and again lots and lots of light in here. You may have noticed from the drone footage earlier we have the sun paving cushions on the front. If the cushions weren't there, then when you open that up again you've got lots more light coming into this area here but the top of the sun paving cushions are there which blocks that off for now so I'll close that up again. These really nice square um, big windows on the side which have got little opening portholes in them as well and then courtesy lights at the head of the bed where you've got his and hers lights there and then more daylight at the top again that's the ability to open that up the sun pad cushion is on there again so you, the light is slightly um, restricted but you can see if that sun pad cushion wasn't there this room would just be bathed in light and at the same square porthole on this side as well you've got a nice vanity area here so you've got your own pull out seat that pulls out and then this lifts up to reveal a nice mirror and space to store um, your ablutions cosmetics etc close that down good size wardrobes so you've got full size hanging space in the wardrobes um, you've got hanging space there well there's about i say there's about 15 items in there so really deep lockers um, and there's the same on the other side as well I mentioned earlier about the heads, you've got um, what they call a Jack and Jill access, so you can come straight into here from the master cabin. And this is quite a nice contemporary designed um, head here, you've got nice blinds, lots and lots of light coming in, but of course you can close the blinds to allow a little bit of privacy if you're in the shower. Um, built in sink, again more storage space under here, a Webasto heating outlet here, LED lighting under all the cabinets, and of course really big size cabinets in here, open that up lots and lots of space in both of those areas so say the owner owner's still using this boat at the moment so there's lots of things in cupboards and these the shower area if i come around into here and pop that into there. The shower area, you've got really good, I say really good headrooms, I hit my head, you've got really good headroom in this area here, um, And but you could also sit down to shower, um, you've got a shower point at the top or an, and another shower point here. This is all, uh, this all turns into a full wet area out there, we close that off and that then just completely closes that off, so a very nice private shower area which is not then going to soak the rest of the heads. I just come back past again. All the toilets are electric. Uh, the toilets are electric flush, and you and they all flush into holding tank. And there's a holding tank display just there as well. So into the final cabin. These are good sized beds actually, so there's two single beds here, but actually I would say the width on these is quite good. On some boats you see single beds and they're actually really, really narrow, more or less child beds. I'd say these are two really good sized single beds. You've got courtesy reading lights, you've got nice LED backlighting. The whole feeling of this boat is very modern, contemporary, it's just got a really good quality feel to her. And you've also got this really nice big square window again here. Years ago you'd have just had the two portholes and it's amazing how much more light comes in when you open up that space. Large um, hanging space locker again in here. Just open that up. So I've put some of the blankets that were here but again you've got a really good size hanging space. So loads of storage on this boat, lots and lots of options for family cruising. If I come back upstairs, I talked earlier at the introduction about the storage space. You can see there really is storage everywhere. You've got storage, you've got a drawer that opens up here. That's full of um, bits and bobs, um, cleaning equipment, close that up. You've got more storage underneath the seat. You've got storage in here, more storage there. There are so many storage options, but I haven't shown you what is probably the biggest and most impressive storage option on the whole boat. So. I move this carpet out of the way. Uh, just to mention about this carpet as well, this carpet is down to be cleaned um, professionally um, before the boat is sold. You might see a few marks on it. Lift this up. Might be expecting a small shallow locker in here, not so. In here, 
you have the most fantastic lazarette space. Now, I've put a couple of the radiators here. That, as I mentioned earlier, the boat's in winter mode at the moment, so the radiators I just popped down there that were out, just keeping the boat nice and toasty and warm. But in here is a fantastic facility to be able to keep. Um, there's additional um, cushions here. A really nice design. I love this. Um, all of your tools um, stored in this stacking system. I really love this. So many times on a boat you have your tools, and if you're like me, the tools are in tool bags, and then the tool bags get open the stuff goes everywhere it's really nice to see a nice bit of design there and a very important feature on a boat i've not seen one of these before it has its own wine cooler so i like to call this area it's more of a wine cellar than a lazarette but a wine cooler here it's an isotherm uh, model and that keeps all of your drinks nice and cool but it's a really good size space there brilliant size to put everything and then you also have another hatch area so i just come across here and open this up see if we can show you this I just opened that door there. You can see inside there is access to the hot water tank. You've got access to your battery chargers and access to your side bilge areas there. So everything really nicely presented. Um, nice attention to detail in the quality of the trunking and the pipe work down there. And, and nice easy access to everything. Right, so I'll just close this up. And there's a few more nice little neat features and benefits that this boat has to offer. So I'll just slide the, the carpet back into position. So up in this, back up here into this seating area, um, you might notice that the, um, the backrest here is quite a long way back. Now, the reason for that is actually in a, a lounging position at the moment, but if I bring that up, that just squares off that area really, really nicely. Um, but if we push that back down again, you, this table is on a large gas strut, so I've opened up these two um, pieces here and if we pop a bit of pressure onto the top, the table goes all the way down, maybe a little bit more pressure, there we go, table goes all the way down and if I then close off those clips, bring across this pad, pop that into there, you've created a really really nice additional lounging area. I think in the evening that is a really nice place. Uh, lots and lots of space and a good place to just relax. I can just imagine sitting up here reading a book. Nice place. So in terms of other features around the boat, if we just come back around again to the, um, the rear seating area, this whole rear seating area slides forward. So you've got a couple of positions so you can actually create more space on the bathing platform if you've got perhaps a larger tender on there. So all you need to do is just lift these clips up and slide the whole unit forward. But even though, when, even when it's in its full forward position, you've still got access to the engine bay. The engine bay access, as I spoke about earlier on, is just underneath this hatch. And what I'm going to do in a moment, is so I'm going to lift up the engine hatch, and then I'm going to hand over to a very familiar face, Jonathan Parker, who's going to talk you through um, what he knows about these engines. So let me tw twizzle the camera around. You can now see the face behind on the cameraman today. Hello there. <laughs> I was going to... I'm Jonathan Parker, so you might see me from some of the other videos I've done. Um, let's put the mic on so you can hear what I'm talking about. Um, but um, but we're gonna I'm gonna disappear myself down into the engine bay. Um, interestingly, you can get down because um, you may think it's a little bit awkward. But one of the first things actually down here is there is a ladder that you can lift up and put into position. There's a small bolt. All you have to do is undo that. and then it gives you just much better access to then um, use as a ladder up and down if you wish to. Uh, what I'll do, I'll put it back down for now, because I'm quite nimble in my age, so uh, I don't need it. And I'll pop it back down and it keeps it out of the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but as you can see, I'm between the two engines, and now these are Volvo Penta IPS 500s. So as Andrew said, it's got the joystick control, and that is basically operating two um, pods Instead of um, sh shaft drives or stern drives, we've got these pods that are bolted to the bottom of the hull, and that then enables the propellers, which are duo props on each IPS unit, to actually turn independently of each other on pods. So that enables them to position themselves in such a way that the boat can go sideways, um, it can twist on its axis, and you can go forward as well as sideways, and you can go at angles, you can pretty much do every angle you want to do and um, I've the first time I've drove this was today and I left the dock here on the IPS and returned on the IPS 
and it was effortless. Really, really easy to do. And um, the engines perform well. Um, even though we're at the time of year now where boats are at their slowest because they've had the whole summer growth on them, um, it picked up onto the plane straight away. Um, it performed well. It did not struggle at all to get on the plane and we still got 24 knots out of it. Um, and I would assume from that we normally lose seven to eight knots um, from an annual growth. So I would assume this is a 30 knot boat easily, um, possibly 32 um, with a clean bottom and clean drives. Um, but the, I, I'm of the understanding that these will be serviced yeah, um, to the new owner. So this will be um, taken out of the water, serviced, um, annual maintenance done. So whoever purchases this will get it ready to go. Uh, but um, what I like about this engine room though is there is quite a lot of space. And, um, and also what they've done is they've, this isn't the bottom of the hull as such. This is another layer of uh, molding that has been put down over the top of the hull molding. What that enables though is a nice clean finish. Um, so you can actually easily keep all the surfaces nice and clean and add extra storage areas. So we can see they store some of the oils and the, and the fluids here as well, but it enables you to actually have good access all around. Um, there's loads of space um, in here um, for ventilation as well. Um, but generally, as I'm looking around, it's a very clean and tidy engine room. There's no evidence of water leaks. There's no evidence of corrosion. It's actually a very nice condition. So I think whoever gets hold of this, um, I think the engines will get a nice, good seal of approval. And like I said, they're gonna be serviced anyway. So any issues will be addressed then. But looking around the engine bay, all looks nice and tidy. Um, and uh, yeah, nice example um, of an engine room on the NC14. Well, thanks Jonathan for running through those engines there. The last thing I want to run through on the boat is just showing the side deck access. Um, lots of really good handholds, so it's good to see that if you needed access at sea, if you need to go out through fenders, ropes, get an anchor down um, in a situation, you've got good, he easy access, and then a little step up here onto the side decks. The side decks are really, really wide on this boat, but lots of good grab handles, so you feel really safe and secure at any time being able to walk along. There's LED courtesy lighting just there, so that will all be illuminated, uh, this area blue at night. And if we move our way up onto the front, I referred earlier to the sunbathing cushions, really good size, long sunbathing cushions here, finished in the silver tex upholstery, but you've still got a good full walk around on the boat. So good walk around, Set, grab handles here so if people are sunbathing and it gets a little bit loppy in a bay you can grab hold of a, um, a nice stainless steel grab handle there but the boat I have to say looks absolutely fantastic the design of the boat having this really nice glass sunroof um, everything is feels chunky she's got a really good feel to herself this boat the anchor locker just in here, um, if I open this up here, there's actually a spare um, outboard engine stored down in there. Um, there's a chain that keeps um, a hose pipe for washing the boat down. So it's a really good size space in there. And of course you've got the electric anchor on this boat as well. So lots of space there. I'll just close that up. And pop that down again. It's interesting, Andrew, because I've noticed something that is different. Yep, go for it. Um, the side access on here, you can see that, you know, we've purposely um, made that a nice deep um, walk round for safety. Yep. Um, so they've enabled that on this side. But um, on the other side, you can see it's, it's just conventional. Oh, so it's actually... So it's a conventional walk round on this side, still as you would expect any other boat to be because um, it still has your grab handle um, and the walk round here uh, and also once you get to the end there is another grab handle here so you can walk round but it's interesting that you know we've purposely made the walk through deep on this side because they know that's one of the issues a lot of people have is the confidence of getting around the boat so for them to purposely do this and not just leave it as a conventional walk through I think um, that's a really good um, example of the thought that's gone into this boat. Yeah, absolutely, I think that's really nice. It's a good, good spot there to notice it. It's, funny, it's, it's similar, we've had some um, some smaller boats recently um, on the, and I think it was an Antares 880 that we've literally just sold, and that was the same design there. That had a slightly smaller access on one side. So it's quite yeah. a clever way of using space. Yeah, no, it absolutely is.
Brilliant. Well, I think that brings us to the end of this walkthrough video. So I hope you've enjoyed um, looking around this boat. And um, please do get in touch if this boat feels like it might be the right, right boat for you and your family in 2022. Um, we're pretty much at the end of the um, end of the season now. So this is, or well, end of the, um, what's not seasons? What I'm trying to say. Not the end of the season, the end of the year. Oh, year, that's the word I'm trying to yeah. think of. It's fairly simple. Um, just at the end of the year now. We're a so week away. We're a week yeah, away, aren't yeah, we? A week and a half from the so end. So a couple of days before Christmas. So thank you all so much for your support this year. Um, it's been a brilliant year for Park Island's boat sales. Lots and lots of boats that we brought on, um, sold, and obviously bringing you these YouTube videos. So thanks for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, have a safe and happy Christmas. And we look forward to seeing you in 2022. Thanks so much for watching. All the best. Happy Christmas from me.